This right here is my 1990 Mazda Miata. So we're excited to announce a new series on the channel, probably gonna be our main series, turning this completely stock 1990 1.6 Miata into a drift build for this season. Now the way we're gonna set this series up is pretty much in stages. So we're gonna have stage one, where it's just all basic drift parts, all essentials to get you out on the track. We're gonna put all those on the car and then go to our first event with it and see how it performs. So when I talk about the stages in stage one, Stage one is going to be um, the basic drift essentials to get you on the track, what you need to make it worth it to go to your first track day. So stage one is gonna consist of those basic parts to get you on the track to make it worth it going to that drift event. Um, you don't wanna pay the, what, $100 emission for the track day, gas, food, everything, and just to show up on the track and realize your car was just not ready for it. So doing this series, my intent is to help people that are not really sure what they need to do to their stock Miata to get it on the track because the Miata is a very popular entry-level drift car. It's probably the cheapest chassis to get into drifting. So the goal is really to show people how much do you really need to put into a Miata to be worth it to get on the track. So after we complete stage one with what I believe is the central parts to get you on the track, we will do our first track day in this car, film it, and we can see how we did. After that first event, we can see what problems we had what did we need more angle? Were we gripping up? Were we spinning out too much? Go from there, install new parts, stage two, and then go to a next drift event and see how that performs. So we're gonna talk about what stage one is. Stage one, I believe to be coilovers. Without coilovers, you're gonna have a lot of body roll. It's, you need coilovers, lower the car a little bit. A welded diff is a necessity, LSDs, they can get you by if you already have one and don't have the money to buy an open diff and weld it. They're cheap, you can get them used, but if you have an LSD, you can do it, but they 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 open up on you, they're not consistent, and it's just, to have a drift car to go on a track day, it's a much better to have welded diff. A bucket seat, again, some people can argue non-necessity, but if you get out on the track, you're paying the money to get there, and you're just moving all around the car, you're fighting the car, you're fighting yourself moving around the car more than focusing on actually drifting, it tends to be a problem. With the Miata, people do do the foam ectomy, which is taking foam out of the seat to lower yourself for taller people, and it holds you in a little bit better. Some people can get by doing that. You can also grab a nb2 seat i believe people say have good bolstering in it to hold you in so there is different options for you there's also maintenance plays a big role in it you don't want to show up to the track again and your car overheats power steering overheats just anything can really happen in a car there's so many variables but there's things on the miata that it's proven to either go wrong or can go wrong more than likely such as power steering, overheating. Um, they sell power steering coolers that are cheap. We'll be installing one of those for stage one. Um, obviously do a fresh oil change for a track day. Check your spark plugs, just check over the whole car, none bolt check. We're gonna go over all of this in the series. Another big factor in drifting a stock Miata is just setup specs. Your setup is gonna make it or break it when you get out there. You can have your coilovers, your diff welded, and a bucket seat and you'll be pretty set. But your alignment set and tire pressure is not what it should be. You're going to be struggling heavily. Now to get away with having such a lack of power in the Miata, for the rear, you want to run probably 50 PSI to even 90 if you really need it. People do it. You need to run higher tire pressure in this car. So they just don't have power. Now alignment specs, you can get away with the stock alignment for your for first couple events. Um, if you do coilovers, you're going to need a new alignment. It won't go down the road straight. When you lower a car, everything's changing. It toes in, it cambers in. So we're going to go into all the specifications and go into much detail in the series for stage one. But for right now, we're just introducing the new series for this channel. So for this video, we're introducing the new series and we're also going to go over some coilover setup and specs. I have already done a couple things to this car before we started the series. The coilovers have been installed and it does have a catback exhaust. The catback exhaust is not needed for drifting whatsoever. This car didn't come with an exhaust from the catback, so I just ordered a cheap eBay one to get me by. 
the coilovers we can go over brands and stuff in my opinion if you're on a budget when you're deciding what coilovers to purchase you got to keep in mind most people if they're going into the miata chassis they're probably on a budget probably the best entry drift car if you have the money is a z or a g but those are a lot more expensive for the initial cost and to run through the season so if you have a miata you either just like miatas or you might be on a budget to get started so when picking your coilovers, you don't want to cheap out too bad. Cheap coilovers are just going to cost you in the long run and it's not worth it. They sell coilovers for like 200 bucks. Do not buy those. It's not worth it. They do not ride good and you'll just be struggling. In my opinion, there's a company called Rev9. People will trash on them. The people that have never bought them will trash on them because they've never used them. I've already had them in one car, I bought them for this Miata, and for the price, they're probably the best budget coilover. The Rev9s come with dampening, which is only found on like more expensive coilovers. And take teens, for example, they obviously don't have dampening, the cheaper ones. And when you adjust the ride height, you're, you're adjusting the spring tension, so it throws it off. BC Coilovers, for example, a notable coilover brand, they have set spring rates from factory that you don't touch, and then to it just the ride height, it's totally separate from the spring. Rev 9s are the same way. The rebound and the spring tension is set from factory. You don't touch it, or you can, it is adjustable if you want, but it is set from factory, separate from your ride height. So when you adjust ride height, you're keeping the spring tension the way it should be. If you do have the money to spend though, put it into your suspension. Suspension goes a long way in any track car. But if you're on that budget, I just feel like Rev 9s is the best way to put your money into. I purchased Rev9 for this Miata, so we will be testing them. We'll be bringing to a track day, and you can see for yourself how they perform. If you don't agree with Rev9s, do your own research and find a better coilover for you. That's awesome. You do that. But in my opinion, I think the Rev9s are pretty good for the price, and we'll see. So this video is pretty much just introducing the new series for this channel. The way we're going to have it set up is we're going to have a video for each part we install. We're going to be talking about why we chose this part and versus other competitive parts for the application and we'll show the install process and all the specs so hope you guys enjoyed just me talking over this new series make sure to subscribe to see all the stuff we do to this car to find out what you really need to do to your miata to get out on that first drift event